Okay. Let's talk about something. You know, every epic in human history is plagued with one thing, and it's infallible. Every branch of science always thought they had a clue on what was going on. 60 years, 100 years, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, they're always proven wrong. Okay, I'd like to go over a test, uh, a quote that uh, Nikola Tesla gave, and start out with the premise that um, something emits light. You know, I've got light bulbs pointed at my ugly face right now. We talk about light bulbs emitting light. The sun emitting light. This extremely powerful LED uh, flashlight emitting light. But is that the case? Everything that we think emits light obviously doesn't. We're talking about a sealed vacuum tube in most cases. Is anything be em being emitted? It's not the case. Well, what's traveling across a vacuum of space? Of course, even space isn't a pure vacuum, but let's just say that it is, and of course it's not. You know, space is nothing. Space is the absence of inertia. So, what is going on? What do you think is being emitted by the sun or a flashlight? We have this notion that there's such a thing as the speed of light. Well, that's not the case. It's an undeniable fact that, for example, when you pass any light um, through glass, the typical slowdown speed is about, uh, I think it's like 11% uh, is the median. Uh, higher capacitance uh, light gets bent more, and there's a reason for that. That's because uh, the blue wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum has higher capacitance and glass is a capacitor. This is an old capacitor that used to have on the electrical lines. This one's dated June 1947. They, uh, the line's been hated repairing and uh, replacing these damn things. Here's a crack. It's not a crack. It's actually a blown out. It actually exploded outwards uh, right off the side. And uh, like when the power goes out and the power comes back on, if there's excess uh, voltage, not current, but excess voltage, which is relevant to dielectricity, rather than amperage, which would be magnetism, it uh, causes this glass to, uh, to overgo, uh, exceed its capacitance, and sometimes it'll actually explode. Uh, somewhere out there, there's even a video of these exploding. Like the old microwaves, before uh, they changed the recipe of the glass, they'd actually crack. Sometimes they'd even explode, not like shatter, shatter, explode, but they did blow up. I mean, I've been witness to, back in the day, you know, more than a few glass bowls shattering inside a microwave. That's electromagnetic radiation, and the glass builds up a charge, and it reaches its charge, and then it releases. Typically, it'll blow. I mean, I remember, you know, being on the other side of the house and hearing those glass bowls just blow inside of a microwave. They change the nature of the glass so it dissipates that charge. By the way, the same way they do that is the same way they actually create ED glass inside of camera lenses. They dope the glass with special chemicals which changes its dielectric uh, permittivity and also changes its magnetic permeability. They dope it with lanthanum dioxide, niobium dioxide, a bunch of other stuff. But getting back to light, things that we think we understand about light, let's first talk about speed of light. Well, there's no such thing as the speed of light. We know that light slows down. It's an irreducible fact. I mean, there is no disputing that. It slows down through glass, for example. It slows down through a lot of different stuff. What about other notions? Nonsense like this. No, this is a match. It's emitting light. No, it's not emitting light. Well, you know, let's say conventionally that it's emitting light. Okay, so we know the speed of light. Right? Yeah. Is there much power here? A little chemical reaction, a little release of uh, energy and light? No, of course there's not. It's a match. Compared to this, this is about a thousand times more. It's actually a little more than a thousand. What about a nuclear explosion? Same thing. The sun? Same thing. So what you're saying is that a match emits light at the exact same speed as a nuclear blast. Well, yeah, it sure does. Okay, let's get rid of these two notions in our head. And we all grew up with this bullshit, and it's exactly what it is. You, you can't call it anything else other than bullshit. A match, a light bulb, everything else does not emit light. It doesn't. They don't emit light at all. They set up a field perturbation. 
Oh, a field perturbation. Yeah, a perturbation in the ether. Irreducibly correct. Speed. There's no such thing as the speed of light. It is a rate of induction. No such thing as the speed of light. Light does not have a speed. It's the maximum limit of propagation of any phenomena with transverse modalities, whether that's simply magnetism, whether that is light, which is a coaxial circuit, which has transverse oscillating, either circular or linear perturbations in a, the form of electricity and magnetism. And ether perturbation necessitates the loss of inertia. That loss can only be expressed by transverse electrical and magnetic reciprocation. This transverse phenomenon is proportional to the rate of induction, which is incorrectly called the speed of light. A, nothing emits light. B, there's no such thing as a speed of light. Anybody wants to argue that fact, let's have at it. You'll have nothing to stand on. Nothing. Light bulbs don't emit light, neither does this match, neither does this flashlight. Neither does the sun. There is no light emitted. It is a field perturbation. You know, it's equally ridiculous to think that someone's in the middle of the pond flapping their arms and creating waves, and you feel those waves lapping at your feet at the edge of the pond. It's like, well, that's a person that's emitting something. A person is emitting jack shit. A person's flapping their arms in the middle of the pond and is setting up a field perturbation in the waves of the water. The water being the medium. In this case, we're talking about inertia. You want to call it inertia, you want to call it the ether, you want to call it zero-point energy. Mother Nature doesn't give a shit what you call it. It's the medium. It's the only medium that there is. Everything in the universe is electrical. Everything. And there's only one field. And everything else is a field modality. There's inertia, longitudinal, the loss of that inertia. The loss of that inertia as expressed in magnetism, which gives volume to 100% of the universe. There is that other uh, field the modality, which is electricity, which is uh, a combination of dielectricity and magnetism. Phi times psi equals Q in a plank of electrification. Gravity does not exist. That which we call gravity is none other than dielectric acceleration. Electrostatics, you know the old trick where you rub a balloon and it will stick to someone's hair or raise their hair up? The same thing that idiots call magnetic acceleration and uh, dielectric or electrostatic uh, charge acceleration where it lifts someone's hair up like with a Van de Graaff generator that's that and all and gravity all of that is one single thing only that's dielectric acceleration the higher the capacitance the greater electromagnetic retardation that occurs as light passes through a capacitor such as glass this phasing is the reason for white light diffraction through a prism and why shorter wavelengths are more greatly diffracted than the red end spectrum of light constructive and destructive interference in phase and out of phase. The coaxial circuit, i.e. light, which is what light is, it's a coaxial circuit, is mutually interdependent. You cancel the dielectric compression, then you cancel the wave front. If you cancel the wave front, you alter or cancel the compression or rarefaction through the ether. This double slit experiment in quantum mechanics is bullshit. Correct observations, correct experimentation is totally unconnected with the explanation for those observations. You know, someone can make totally accurate and reproducible experiments and observations and give you total bullshit explanations. Like, well, this person discovered a new sort of phenomenon. This is their explanation. Well, they discovered something new, but their explanation is bullshit. See, this is the error that people make. It's like, if A, then B. It's like, well, if someone discovered this and this is their explanation, you know, then that follows because they discovered it. In logic, that's a total fallacy. Total fallacy. You know, this asshole, this idiot that is, uh, is rotting the mo scientific minds of... You know, we talk about physics, too, when we talk about quantum, i.e. quantity, i.e. physicality. Physics and quantum, i.e. materialism, i.e. atomism, it has nothing to do with field theory, because fields, in principle, given Maxwellian field equations, always uh, talk about a time variable and a, an effect over a given period of time. A field in and of itself has no quantity, it has no physicality, it is not phenomena. You cannot quantify a field. You cannot talk about, well, I'm a physicist. I've had some people really recently, they say, look at the length of my PhD, I'm a physicist. So great, you know, here's a real shocker, asshole. Fields are not physical. I don't give a damn if you're a physicist. You know, why don't you give me the denotation or the quantification of a field in principle? You'll never be able to do it. 
None of them ever have. None of them ever will. They'll talk about Maxwellian field equations and vectors, but these are temporal expressions over a given period of time and of influence. It's nothing different than talking about like a Gauss meter where you have a certain flux density over a given period of time and it measures an X amount of Gaussian flux. It's like, well, that's, uh, that's the definition. No, that's an expression of effect over time. That is not any definition or denotation of what the hell a field is. We're talking about light here. You know, the idiot Einstein says, it seems as if we, have, we must use some of the only theories that create the other, while at times we may use either. I say, he goes on to say, we are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light, the particle and the wave, but together they do. You know what the real explanation of duality is in the expression of a wave particle? Du duality means ignorance. Okay, it's like five blind men feeling an elephant. Well, this part feels like a big pancake, this part feels like a barrel, and another blind man's grabbing onto the tail. It's like, this part feels like a snake. It's just, duality means ignorance. It means you don't understand anything. Light is not a duality. It is no wave particle duality at all. It's completely ridiculous. You understand what light is? It's perfectly, perfectly simple. Mother Nature is sitting on her back laughing her tits off at humanity for being so stupid. And uh, that is where humans are. We think we're so advanced with our computers and crap. We really don't understand anything. Most humans, that is. Um, and, of course, the photoelectric effect. Another uh, incorrect explanation. I'll go into that later. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about a candle versus a nuclear blast. Well, they're both emitting light. No, they're not emitting light. They're not emitting anything. Well, they're emitting light at the same speed. It's like, yeah, there's a light being emitted there, but it's not being emitted, and it's certainly not a speed. It's a rate of induction, and it's a field perturbation. Nothing's being emitted by anything. Nothing. This flashlight is not emitting light. It's setting up a perturb perturbation by the release of charge in the batteries. Field perturbation. This flashlight works the same way in outer space or here on Earth. Nothing is being emitted. There is nothing here. There's no quanta, no quantity. It's like, yeah, there's photons there. Here's another thing. No one on Earth has ever discovered a photon. There is no such thing as a photon. You will find no empirical evidence. Or, yeah, we sure we have. No. No, that's not the case. You think you're going to take the lens off your camera and spill out the photons after a day of shooting? It's full of photons. There's no such thing as a damn photon particle. This shit doesn't exist. There is not one evidence on this Earth, this green Earth, for a fucking photon particle anywhere. Nobody has one single evidence of such bullshit. It's, a, it's, it's pathetic uh, discardian atomism dreamt up by these quantum assholes. You know, light is a coaxial circuit. It is an electrical, magnetic, and dielectric circuit. There is no quantity. There's no phenomena within light. That's like saying if I turn on a, a powerful flash, oh my god, my hand's being bombarded by photon particles. Well, if that's the case, when I turn the light off, then maybe they should like spill. You know, it's like, no, that's crazy. No, what you're saying is crazy, asshole. You know, you're saying that particles are being, yeah, but it's, it's like a particle and it's like a wave. It's like, that's what they call it, wave particle duality. Shut the fuck up with that bullshit. I can't stand you know, just insane, bat crap crazy BS. You know, just don't even think of feeding me stupid shit like that. Mother Nature is not a cross-eyed crack whore. You know, it doesn't work that way. Nature does not work that way. Here's a quote from Nikola Tesla, April 8th, 1934, to the New York Times. I only recently discovered this. I've been through all the works of Tesla, including the really obscure crap that uh, he said... Uh, you know, that nobody really uh, makes mention of. There's something frightening about the universe when we consider that uh, our only senses and our sights make a beautiful. The universe is, uh, universe is darker than the darkest ink, colder than the coldest ice, yada, yada, yada. The fascination of the false electromagnetic theory of light advanced by Maxwell and subsequently uh, experimentally investigated by Hertz was so great that even now, although controverted, uh, the scientific minds are under its sway. This theory supposed uh, the existence of a medium which was solid, yet permitted bodies to pass through it without resistance. This uh, is a tenuous beyond conception. In other words, it's ludicrous insanity. And yet according in to our conceptions of mechanical principles and ages of experience, such a medium was absolutely impossible. Light was wrongly considered a phenomena bound up in that kind of medium, namely transmitting vibrations like a solid. 
What then can light be, this is his explanation of light, if not a transverse vibration? I consider this extremely important. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal disturbance in the ether. Oh my God! It's basically what I said. I made the discovery before discovering this quote from Tesla. Involving alternate compressions and rarefactions, light can be nothing else than a sound wave in the ether. This appears clearly if it is first realized that there is no Maxwellian ether. Therefore, there can be no transverse oscillations in the medium. Newtonian theory is an error because it fails entirely in not being able to explain how a small candle can project light at the same speed as a blazing sun, which has immensely higher temperatures and power. Um, propagates the same velocity, irrespective of the character of the source. See, that's a big clue into the nature of light. You know, a match is propagating something at the exact same speed as a nuclear explosion or this or the sun, independent of the power of the source. <laughs> if you can get two things through your head, and this is irreducibly true, nothing emits light. Nothing is a field perturbation. And light is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. You know, how else are you going to account for light decelerating through glass, which is not an acceleration, it's in a rate of induction, and then re-accelerating after it leaves out again. I mean, where the hell is this imaginary power coming from? That's like saying if I decelerate a car, and then I pass a certain zone, then I re-accelerate without applying any gas. It just, the car re-accelerates itself. Well, I mean, that's total bullshit, isn't it? Well, of course it is. Everything in the universe is based upon capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. I mean, the notion that light is like hitting glass and then slowing, which it does, it slows down, but it's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. And it speeds up again as it exits the glass, and this is a hardcore fact. It's empirically proven over and over and over and over and over again. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, if you do that with a car, you'd have to reapply some gas. What is light doing? Light got some gas reserves, and after it leaves the glass, it reaccelerates. No, because it's a rate of induction. It's not a fucking speed. Light does not reaccelerate after leaving the glass, rather the rate of induction resumes. Further, still proof that light is not a speed, but a rate of induction. The rate of induction of the ether perturbation is entirely contingent upon the resistance and permeability of the electrical attributes of the medium the perturbation is passing through. Oh, damn. If I think about it, that makes sense. See, here's the fact. There's no such shit as a photon. So the notion of a photon being fired through a double slit experiment and interfering with itself, like they said, they fired a single photon. This is bullshit. No one on Earth has ever given any evidence of a photon particle. It doesn't effing exist. It doesn't. No scientist on Earth can ever prove they fired a photon, much less a single photon. It's impossible. The double slit uh, causes an EM spatial retardation in the phase shift of the ether perturbation that behaves the same regardless of the amount of light that passes through the slit or slits, or around the needle in my case. The results are the same. I can go on and on and on and on about this all day long, but your eyes will roll back in the back of your skull and you'll be like, ah, enough about light. Okay? Nothing emits light, and light is not a fucking speed. If you can understand that, you'll be a lot smarter than 99.99999% of the rest of the world. Okay? Some people don't give a crap about this. Some people like to know stuff. Okay? Thank you so much. Bye.